everybody. So over the past days, I've been thinking about anger. We've seen and heard a lot of angry statements over the past weeks and months. I'm not going to try to comment on whether these statements are justified or not. Rather, I wanted to pause for a minute and reflect on what does the Bible say about anger? Is it okay to be angry? And what do I do with anger when I feel it? We often hear people quoting a portion of Ephesians 4.26 that says, Do not let the sun go down on your anger. So when we hear this, we sometimes experience this as, is it wrong to be feeling anger? And so I feel like I have to get rid of it as fast as I can. So I push it away and bury it. I push it away and paint a smile and I say, I'm not angry. Or perhaps if our anger is directed towards an incident or a person, we rush into saying, well, I don't okay, I forgive you. It's okay. Actually, maybe it's not okay. Which leaves us with this sense of unresolved anger it can grow into bitterness or resentment and really have tragic consequences on our own mental well-being and on our relationships with others. So let's start by looking at what Ephesians 4.26 says as an entirety, along with verse 27. It says this, In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. The first part of this passage is actually a quote from Psalm 4 verse 4, which says, Tremble, or as it was translated from the Hebrew to the Greek, it says, In your anger do not sin. When you are on your beds, Search your heart and be silent. The picture here is of someone pausing in their anger and searching their heart. Where is this anger going to lead them? See, the verse in Ephesians is not, do not be angry. Rather, it's when you're angry or in your anger. There is a recognition that there are times when we feel angry. Anger itself is not a sin. Like many emotions, we do not call anger good or bad. The feeling of anger is not the issue. The issue is what do you do with that feeling? This is what Paul's pointing towards. You're going to get angry. There are going to be offenses and injustices in this life that are going to impact you. The question is not if you get angry, but what are you going to do when you feel anger? For many, the response is to shove it away. It's so unbecoming to be a Christian and to feel angry, so we just ignore it and try to repress it. But by doing this, we do give the enemy a foothold in our hearts, where the seeds of resentment and bitterness can grow. And this can taint the way we see the world and the actions of others, as it can create a spirit of suspicion or criticism towards many things that have nothing to do with the root of your anger. However, the other response sometimes is to say, well, then I'm just justified and I'm going to be angry. I'm going to attack people, lash out in my anger, defend myself, hurt them back because they hurt me. And it's a matter of pride that drives us to be right and to win. And unfortunately, this can just have a drastic effect on our relationships. So what do we do? Well, I like the image of pausing that Psalm 4 talks about. What if I stop for a moment and really consider, well, where is this anchor coming from? Is it justified? What would be a kind of response I could give that would neither push it away or cause me to attack? This is an internal work, and it can be a challenge. We've become really used to either lashing out when we're angry because I can't let it go on the one hand or, or pushing it away and seething under the surface whenever we see a person that's hurt us. But when we pause, we have the opportunity to be really honest with ourselves, to reflect on our anger, to reflect on its roots, to take it honestly before God, who doesn't judge us for our feelings of anger, but he welcomes them. As we see throughout the Psalms, he's able to give us perspective hold us in our anger, and help us to discern a healthy, godly response. And oftentimes, the feelings of anger is going to require us to respond. We may need to talk to the person that hurt us, or where we feel the offense. We may need to speak out against some injustice that we see. But by stopping and reflecting before God, we're better able to respond in a healthy way that promotes reconciliation and relationship. James 1 verse 19 says this, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. When we strive to be better listeners than we are speakers, we learn that often our anger comes from a place of presumption. We, we, that we presume we know what the other person is thinking of doing, and we react to that. But as we learn to listen, we get a fuller picture and it gives us space to recognize our emotions, to acknowledge them, and to deal with them in a way that honors God and builds relationship. So that's just a few thoughts on anger and there's many other places we could go, but just something for you to think about. Have a great day.